Welcome to the next segment of my Minecraft mod notebook. I'm uh, going to call this Minecraft 201. Uh, this is going to cover the not necessarily basics of Minecraft, but basics of Minecraft in terms of mods. So, this is uh, pretty much going to be a shorter episode, I hope. Uh, I'm going to be covering chunks and how they affect tech builds and uh, where exactly are you going to be starting from when you do a tech build uh, or a tech map. So uh, the chunks, it's 16 by 16 uh, blocks and I believe each block is a meter. So 16 by 16 meters uh, it goes from bedrock to the build height. And for the purposes of uh, calculations and any sort of mechanics, uh, unloaded chunks don't exist. So for those of you with a uh, any sort of a mapping utility, uh, there should be a show chunk boundaries option. Uh, the 16 by 16 uh, chunk size does lend itself very nicely to a 15 by 15 building space. Uh, it's what I personally use, uh, if not necessarily an exact 15 by 15, I do some sort of a multiple of this. Uh, usually it's three chunks by three chunks. Uh, this is kind of a twofold solution to many problems. Uh, first of all, it allows me to have everything loaded with a single chunk loader and uh, it does tend to be a large enough working space. Also, the 15 by 15 is large enough to use, yet small enough to avoid problems such as running out of materials on your second night, which is always fun. So, when it comes to mods, you want to avoid chunk boundaries like the plague. Uh, Multi-block structures, which I will just be referring to as MBSs, uh, when they cross chunk boundaries, they may do one of several things. Uh, they may either work, not work, work sometimes, or explode. Uh, the Railcraft boilers, IC2 nuclear reactors, uh, especially the multi multi-block versions of them, are both very popular for the uh, catastrophic failure events. Uh, also, not crossing chunk boundaries will reduce issues of debugging. Uh, I did play Better Than Wolves for uh, two or three months, and I made a auto kiln, uh, basically a very fancy redstone contraption, running off of a very precise timer, and I believe I had uh, a four to six tick window to make everything run. Uh, when I crossed the chunk boundaries, I couldn't get it to work, I moved everything within the chunk boundaries and suddenly it started working just fine. So, uh, with that in mind, I just avoid them now. Uh, keeping everything inside chunk boundaries also reduces the number of chunk loaders. Um, a quarry, if improperly set up, can, uh, just the default 9x9 Billcraft quarry, can occupy uh, four chunks. Those all need to be loaded. That's more more resources on the server and more RAM, uh, more chunks loaded, and more processing power to keep everything running inside those chunks. Uh, if you set everything up in the inside the chunk boundary, it goes from four chunks loaded to two, or to a single chunk loaded. It's a uh, quarter of the load potentially. So do that a couple dozen times, and suddenly you've got a rather significant drop in server load. So, uh, where I'm going to be starting with this analysis is after the basics are done. And all things being relative, uh, by basics I mean some sort of power, uh, be it two or three basic generators of whatever type that you prefer to use, uh, a couple of solar panels perhaps, maybe a, uh, a geothermal generator, uh, just a little bit of power to run a furnace, uh, basic ore processing, uh, 
perhaps at this point you might have an electric tool or two depending on the mod uh, I know Greg Tech likes to get his hands on uh, on the stuff and make any sort of electric tool more of a mid game item but that's Greg but uh, I'm going with just basic uh, your basic electric tool maybe your intro level or uh, electric armor so once you have that then this would be a very good spot to begin to optimize your build for uh, your further endeavors so that will wrap up the uh, intro to Minecraft 102 uh, next time we will start some actual analysis on optimizing builds so until then think big <laughs>